Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm on a staircase. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very tight staircase. Yes, very tight. I'm not out exploring at the moment, as you can possibly see. Um, I'm feeling a bit run down, actually, but uh, at least I'm not run over. I'm here with the lovely Kevin Hall. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Richard. Uh, Kevin, you may have seen on many of our walks, not, uh, not least the ones in Norfolk, but many around Midhurst area. Yes, indeed. But uh, we're in Kevin's office, which is an office that moves about wherever you are needed, so to speak. Wherever I'm needed, yeah. And I'm needed here. He's needed here. Kevin very kindly has said, uh, he's looked at my house and just went... And so he said, do you know what? I'm going to come and help you tidy up your hallway because it's a mess. And it yes. is a mess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it probably hasn't been painted for about 20 years. Yeah. If that, yes. I mean, or if, you know, that's, that's giving it uh, a mild yeah. amount of time. Absolutely. And so Kevin's come here, but I thought, oh, well, I better make a video because people would be upset if I don't put one out. Absolutely. But it gives me an opportunity uh, to sit and have a chat with you briefly whilst we uh, just mm -hmm. have our tea break, as the British work people do. Yes. Straight after lunch. Straight after lunch. I'm wrapped up in this warm thing because it's quite cold in the hallway. Is Even it? though, well, I'm cold. You're not cold. No. I've got the SE on in the kitchen there. It should be pumping heat into here, but... Um, no, I feel a bit cold. We've been opening the doors and things. Anyway, the point is, uh, it gives me an opportunity to talk to Kevin because this is a, a period house. It is indeed. Compared to the new builds mm -hmm. that people have. Mm -hmm. And you've worked on uh, timber-framed Ch Tudor timber houses. Yes, indeed. In yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I thought it'd be a, an ideal opportunity just to talk about the things that um, can go wrong or the problems that you encounter when you have to do up a house. Oh, yeah. So and they can be fast. And they, I'm sure. Yeah. So in this house, um, it's a brick two up, two down house with wood chip wallpaper. Decorators hate it. Do they? I'm not surprised. It. I'm not surprised mm. <clears throat> because you can't pull it off. It's one of the most difficult papers to get off a wall. Um, invariably, you have to use a steam stripper to, to soften it up. But before you can even do that, you have to pierce the paper um, with a, a, a different sorts of serrators and it marks up the surface so that the steam can then penetrate to the back of the paper and then you can strip the paper off. But they can be a nightmare. They can take a, an, an area this big, hall stairs and landing of, of a two up, two down, could take you two days to do. Crikey, just to get the paper just off. Just to get the paper off, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, I didn't put that in. That was here when we moved in 28 years ago, a long time ago. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Um, and one of the other tasks that you've been doing here is making good the, I mean, today is like preparation day, isn't it? It is, yeah, all the filling up. Yeah, and you've been going around the uh, the joins where the ceiling meets the wall and the wall meets the skirting board. Exactly, yeah. Putting in decorators corking cork. or yeah. cork. Cork. Cork, mm. which is not the same as cork that you find in a bottle. No. No. So no. I don't know why it's called cork, but... Well, some people really, what they really annoy me is that they'll do their, try and do their own stuff, but they will use silicon. Right. To go around the joints. Because it's like a silicon. It's like it's, the stuff you put around the bath, isn't it? It's similar, but, the, but dif it's, the difference between a decorator's cork and a silicon, you can paint over decorator's cork, but you can't de you can't paint over silicon. Ah, yeah. Um, because, it, and the other thing, I was, as, I was, as I was going around earlier on explaining to you, with the decorator's cork, once it's in, you have to leave it to cure for two to three hours, depending on... The, the conditions of the, the temperature of the house because if you try and paint it before it's cured as the paint dries and the and the silica and the cork dries the paint will crack and then you'll have cracks over top of the silica yes of cork now in order to reach some of these <laughs> joins uh, kevin has had to be uh, almost like one of these daredevils going across the uh, Niagara Falls that you see, like a tightrope walk. Only yeah. you, you, you had a plank. Yeah. But yes, it's a quite a tall 
hallway, mm. I've got um, a not terribly safe banister. No, that's, that, that's yes. That's, that's good, putting it mildly. Let's, let's put it mildly, yes. And, <laughs> and I mean, you can see there's no, there's no banister rails on this side of the... Nothing here at all. Nothing here. We took that out because yeah. um, we were hoping the children might fall off. <laughs> and it, no, no, we took that out because getting the furniture up and Ooh. down was a bit of a problem, so we got rid of those. Mm. But up there, you had to do a balancing act to, uh, to do that. Yeah, on the landing part at the back of the... which is just above where I'm sitting where the banister comes round, I had to have my tall pair of steps. And then directly behind where we are, I had to have a ladder um, onto the, the back wall or the bathroom wall there, uh, with a plank stretched right across the, what they call a stairwell. Yes. Um, it's a little bit too high, but... Um, too high in terms that you couldn't stand up I couldn't up stand up, so I was, yeah. I was kneeling on it. Um, so that made it a little bit more awkward, but... In relation to some of the stairwells that I've done, this is this is not very high at all. Oh, right. Oh, well, that's all right then. Yeah. Because uh, I know you're not very good on heights anyway. I've, I've become more un, un, unsure of myself over the years. I had a, a nasty accident. Nothing to do with falling off of a ladder or anything like that in, in, in two, 2012. But it made me a little bit more careful, shall we yes. say. Um, you suddenly realise you're mortal. Absolutely. And yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know if I've ever showed you the photographs. You have, yeah. and it's quite, I'm not going to put them no. up. You've also been working on, as we said at the beginning, a sort of, um, I guess, Tudor, Elizabethan, that sort of period house, timber framed. Yeah, houses. I think it was built in 1643. Right. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the, the sort of Stuart time. Yeah, and it was near to Midhurst, a place called South Ambersham. And if you remember the beast from the east coming through the house was unoccupied the gentleman had passed away the year before and the beast from the east did its worst on the property frozen pipes everywhere burst pipes everywhere and i think i actually did post some photographs or it might have been a little video of when i was working in there right but the the water stains were on everything every wall every ceiling was just it was a mess everywhere and that's a that must it was the house um it wasn't listed was it listed or it's anything? grade two listed yeah grade two listed so that restricts what you can do presumably. yeah absolutely yeah. yeah um some of the as as the work was progressing i found that there's windows rotten in several areas so windows had to be handmade to an exact match of the windows that came out right um because they were all leaded light windows as well so that had to be some of them had to be replaced but again, they had to replay, be replaced exactly to match the, the original. Because, of course, you know, back then in those days, a timber framed house was pretty unique. Mm, you know, absolutely. each one yeah. was built, may have been built to a pattern, mm. but uh, you're working with green timber. Absolutely. That over time <laughs> is uh, going to be drying out and yeah. contracting or expanding and warping. Mm. So those windows. Uh, I guess were manufactured to fit that one, one house. Yeah, there, there was not. Yes, there was green timber about in those days, but there was a, a, an awful, awful, awful lot of seasoned timber as well. Um, but yes, mainly on these old, older properties for a while, there was a lot of green timber. But it's, it's, it's a tra it's, it's tragic when you see these old, old properties. Cause I love working in old some of the old properties. Some could be a real nuisance or a big pain. But it's just lovely when you see the character yes. in, in some of the old buildings, which you don't get in the modern building. Yes. And, and, and I mean, when you're working with the walls that might be wattle and daub mm. and all of that, and you've got to uh, paint it and make it look good again, mm. is there certain procedures that you would do that you wouldn't have to do with, say, a brick like mine? Yes, absolutely. Because if you find one that's wattle and daubed, or even horse hair. Yeah, horse hair. Um, that you you have to try and be you you have to try and be patient with it because it doesn't it, it really won't let you do what you need to do, um, and and that can, can be very very time consuming. So you have to again look at it from the process of is this a, a shall we say a panel in a timber frame building that can be taken out and redone. Um, but again, if you do that, you've got to try and put it back as near to original as you can. Yes. So then that means you've got to then find an, um, 
a, a plasterer that will do that type of work. Yes, which can obviously be more expensive. Exactly. The whole yeah. thing a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. Before we go, this um, is being painted, and I said to you, um, Kevin, I can go and get the paint down the road mm. from one of the, you know, there's a number of um, DIY places that sell paint. Yep. To me, quite reasonable. In fact, we, we went to a store earlier without <coughs> mentioning the names to get some expanding foam to fit into uh, some of the holes I've got. And they had an offer of, uh, I don't know how much it was, something like 10 litres, two for the price of uh, 20 quid. Yeah. So 10 pounds, so basically a pound a litre. Mm. And I thought that was quite good value, but um, Kevin's not so keen on that paint. And I just maybe thought you might explain why. It's a typical DIY product. Um, I, I explained to you an experience I had where a lady had asked me to use a particular brand of paint from and a DIY store. From a DIY store. Um, and she couldn't understand why two coats of emulsion had not covered th the, the walls and the ceiling properly. And she said, could see through it. You could see she? through it because the paint is so thin, so runny, um, and it's just not the, the coverage there that you get with a good trade emulsion. And there are lots and lots of good. I particularly like a brand of paint. Can I mention it? Yeah, if you're going to um, say something nice. Johnson's, um, I love Johnson's paint, um, but sadly for Richard, I couldn't. When I went to collect the paint, they didn't have any in stock, so I had to buy another brand. It it will be just as good. It's a trade quality paint, um, so that's what we're going to be using on the ceiling and walls uh, on on Richard's hall stairs and landing. Because I've always thought when you say things, like, not you particularly, but when you hear um, workmen say, "Oh, it's trade." paint or trade this trade that that it was inferior mm -hmm. i always had that impression because it was trade mm -hmm. you know like with the tradesman's entrance it was like yeah it's sort of budget stuff that we get cheap and slap it all over mm -hmm. but actually it sounds from what you've told me that that's actually the reverse, it's a reverse. that actually the trade paint is more the the professional higher spec yeah and therefore a lot more expensive exactly. yeah and will last a hell of a lot longer and you can do more to it yeah. i.e um, clean and scrub it than you can the cheap stuff that you get on the DIY circuit. Yeah, about 10 years ago, um, most of the main manufacturers brought out a, a brand of paint which is called Durable Finish. Um, mentioning one name, Dulux, there is a, what they call a diamond matte finish. And basically the paints take about 21 days to cure completely. But once they are cured, they are as good as scrubbable um, and these paints can be used in any area hall stairs landings lounges dining rooms kitchens bathrooms and that's our time done and dusted done and dusted, done and dusted. we've got the dust sheets down on the ground yeah thank you kevin no, thanks for all you. your it's work not a problem um, we i'm not sure whether there'll be a video tomorrow there might be an update to what we've done because you're back tomorrow back tomorrow yeah so a bit of a behind the scenes really but thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe. And of course, I'll be out very soon. But I need to get Kevin straight back to work. We can't have him slacking <laughs> too long. So, uh, Kevin, back up your ladder and on your plank. Okay. And uh, I'll just take some photos. Yes. Till next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.